understand what the struggle over Jerusalem is about. We really have to go to the mindset of the Middle East. I don't have to elaborate about Jerusalem and Judaism, capital of two Juda uh, Jewish dynasties, two temples, which sum all together to some thousand years of Jewish sovereignty over Jerusalem, the direction of the prayer from wherever people are, east, west, south, north. In every prayer, we commemorate Jerusalem. Once a year, we fast in Tisha B'Av for <coughs> because of the destruction. In, in wedding, we commemorate Jerusalem. The breaking of the glass in the wedding is to commemorate the destruction of Jerusalem. So definitely Jerusalem is deeply engraved into our life as individuals, as families, and as a nation. The question is how this Jerusalem became holy to Muslims to a degree the Palestinians keep uh, announcing that without having Jerusalem as the capital of the future Palestinian state, they will not have a state. They will give up on the state. It is strange. For uh, Muslims, uh, it's Mecca. This is where they go to pilgrimage. Medina, Mecca, Hijaz, Saudi Arabia. How come? Jerusalem became so holy to a degree that they say that Jerusalem is the third place in holiness for Islam after Mecca and Medina. Another good question is why this uh, fact or this allegation that Jerusalem is the third place in holiness only restricted to Sunni Islam and not to the Shi Islam. Shiites view Najaf in Iraq, the third place in holiness. Matter of fact, historically, they don't view Jerusalem as any more as a no holier than any other village or town in the, in the Islamic world. It's another city. So this difference actually raises the question: Why? Is this so? Why don't Shiites share this feeling about Jerusalem with the Sunnis? So all these questions I will try to answer within the coming four hours. Worry not. I, this is how I check if you guys listen. Uh, okay. In order to understand this issue, we have to take step backward to the beginning, very beginning of Islam. Prophet Muhammad, when he started his prophecy in Mecca at around 610 or 11 or 12, around these years, CE, 610 more or less, he was viewed by the people of Mecca as somebody who only recycles uh, material of the former religions, as they accused him for uh, recycling Asatir al Awalim. Asatir al Awalim is the story, Asatir and story is the same root. Awalim, the first ones, means they have again stories about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and King Solomon and King David and Jesus, and Johannes, and all those prophets which they knew from the Jews and from, from the Christians. So they actually accused him that the whole thing which you bring us under the title of Islam is no more than, than recycling of old stuff which we know already from Jews and Christians. What is the Chiddush? What is the new stuff which you bring us? So they accused him. Who is they? The people of Mecca. Who are they? His uh, tribe, the Quraysh the tribe. 
His brothers and sisters and their cousins, he actually became one. This what he was born in Mecca. And Mecca was populated by the by the Quraysh tribe. And uh, he wanted them to to convert to Islam, to stop cheating in in the business, to release all the servants which they had, all the all the uh, slaves which they were enslaving, and uh, to stop burying the daughters alive. Uh, and, and in the Quran, he dedicated the whole chapter to this issue, because this was a customs within the Ar custom within the Arabs of those years. Whenever they couldn't feed anybody, uh, uh, all the kids because of a uh, shortage of uh, food and water, because of famine on all these days. So they got rid of the young daughters by uh, digging a little ditch in the desert, leaving the daughter there, and leaving her for the mercy of the sun on one side and the birds on the other side. And this is how they had uh, reduced number of uh, of mouths to feed, so they could all survive. So bury the daughters uh, alive. Of course, they had idols, they had adolescents, idol worshiping society. That's the so he wanted them to stop all these bad customs and to embrace Islam as some kind of uh, religion which will uh, correct the ways of behavior. They, of course, rejected it because it was, it, it was against the tradition, against the mindset, and he had to run away. They tried to kill him twice or thrice, and he had to flee to Medina in the year of 622, like 10 years after he became a prophet or self nominated prophet. He uh, uh, emigrated to, to Medina. It's called the Hijab, Hagira. And the same thing, well, this, this was the Hijri. Uh, this is why they say the Hijri date. Mm -hmm. Stuff of Judaism and Christianity actually caused him to feel that he's some, some kind of polemic with Jews and Christians. In order to, to show that Islam is actually a valid religion. So when you read the Quran, and I highly, and highly uh, uh, recommend to read the Quran in any language, of course in Arabic is the best, this is the origin, you can very easily sense that he is in a kind of polemic with others. Allah, Allah tells him, they tell you such and such, you answer them such and such. This is, it occurs in many times in the Quran because actually he was trying to establish the validity of Islam as a new religion in spite of the fact that he was actually talking about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Solomon and David and Jesus and, and Johannes and all these things. So definitely it, it, it is religious from the beginning. Islam struggles for its validity to be viewed as very as very religion and I, I would even say until this very day. They go around with feeling that it is easy to view Islam as some kind of recycling of other things. So, by the way, there are some sediments of, uh, of uh, idol worshipping uh, uh, religions from the Arab Peninsula because, for example, the Kaaba, the, holy, the black stone in, 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 in Mecca, was an idol for centuries before Islam came to the world. They were worshipping this stone is some kind of uh, goddess. So, uh, definitely, uh, and, and it's entered Islam. So, Islam also has sediments of, uh, of uh, idol worship. He ran away to Medina in 622, and there he became head of state, city-state of Medina. Uh, Why did he run, sorry? Sorry? Why did he run from Medina? Because his relatives tried to kill him because he was preaching against the, the habits, against the customs of that. So uh, they, they actually tried to him, and his cousin, Ali, replaced him in bed, because they tried to assassinate him in his bed. So they hurt his cousin instead. There were asked stories about this. So 
he ran to, to, to Medina, established an army, a community, and he tried to, to convince three tribes of Jews who lived near Medina uh, in an oasis named Khaybar uh, to, to join Islam. Because if they, Jews, if they join Islam, it will show that Islam is actually better than Judaism. If they abandon Judaism and they join Islam, it will give Islam a seal of hechsher, uh, seal of approval, as if this is a better or more valid, uh, uh, more valued uh, uh, religion than, than, than Judaism. That's why he tried to convince them to join, uh, to join Islam. Uh, in the beginning, it was by directing his, his uh, prayer to Jerusalem. To Jerusalem. And this is said, uh, this is uh, taught, taught us by the Hadith. Uh, not, not by the Quran, because in the Quran, it, Jerusalem doesn't appear even once. Uh, hadith, the secondary source of Islam, is actually what is parallel in Hebrew to the Torah Shebe'al Pet, Mishnah, the Gemara. This is, it's not parallel to the Bible. The Bible is the part of the Quran, while the Hadith, the oral tradition about the, the Prophet, is part of the Mishnah and the Gemara. No. But for Hadith, we have to understand. The Hadith was written like 200 years after the beginning of Islam. 200 years it was carried by memory of people who had this profession of memorizing the Hadith. They might have some tzedalach, you know, to remember, uh, some notes to remember, but, but officially the hadith was not written. And because it was so flexible, uh, it was victim to forgeries. I'll give you an example. In, in the, the first watermelons were brought to the Islamic uh, Empire in the mid-9th uh, ninth century like 130 years after Muhammad passed away. And they were brought to, to Baghdad, to the capital of, of uh, those days, in, in, uh, the empire. And the price was very high, because it's a new thing, very sweet, red, you know, watermelon. But the problem is that you can sell watermelon for high price only once. Why? The seeds. the seeds. The seeds. Once you buy one with seeds, every watermelon has some hundreds of seeds. You collect the seeds, you put them in the ground, you water it, and you have a whole field uh, full of, uh, of, uh, uh, of watermelons, and the, the, the price will drop. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, those who were carrying the hadith in their minds, all of a sudden they know about new hadith that somebody heard somebody who heard somebody who heard the Prophet Muhammad saying that the price of, of uh, watermelon in the, in the market cannot be lower than dot dot dot. <laughs> okay? So it is clear that this is a forgery of those who are aware in the circles of, uh, of uh, the in, uh, importing of, uh, of, uh, of watermelon. So this, this is clear. This is forgery of the hadith. As if Paul uh, Muhammad he didn't see a watermelon. But th this was uh, people were inventing hadith in order to, to have the price of it in certain level. Uh, th this, is, this is easy to, to detect. There's another problem because, you know, the Shiites and the Sunnis uh, divided Islam uh, like 30 years after Muhammad passed away in the mid 7th century. And uh, actually, the, uh, this rift between the Sunnis and the Shias is about the Caliphate. Who was the legitimate Caliph? What is it? Ali, the fourth Caliph, or Muawiyah, the one who took the Caliphate from him by force and, and became the fifth Caliph. Those who are loyal to Ali and his descendants are the Shiites. Those who are loyal to Muawiyah, the fifth one, and his descendants are the Sunnis. So all of a sudden, uh, we see that the Sunnis have a whole library of hadith which enhance the cause of the Sunnis or the claim of the Sunnis to the Caliphate. 
while the Shiites, the whole library of the Shiite uh, uh, hadith, which proves that Prophet Muhammad uh, promised Ali the caliphate and not Muawiyah. Okay, so definitely this is uh, some kind of uh, forgery on both sides because <laughs> Muhammad didn't know about this rift. How could he talk about Sunnis and Shi's? Okay, so this, uh, this, this is why the hadith is so problematic uh, because it was subject to, uh, to forgeries for the first 200 years of Islam until it was written because of the, because of the nine scholars actually kicked out most of the hadith is uh, suspected or for or sheer forgery of the hadith and, and they tried to let to leave only the uh, only the correct uh, hadith which they believed to be correct. One down. One. Uh, Six. What, the corner scholars were nine scholars. No, and there's now so only they, one hadith for Shia and Sunni, the same one? No. Oh. Still they have two kinds of hadith. Uh, within the Sunni Islam, uh, there is uh, like nine books which are very thin after they kicked out uh, most of the hadith as uh, forgery. And they, I must say that they were, they, students, said that there is much forgery before many others said it. So we have to salute them for trying to do this. About Jerusalem is from the hadith. Okay? So immediately we have to be very careful about this stuff. So, what, what the modern, uh, what the modern uh, research found, that uh, uh, when he tried to grab those Jews to believe in Islam, in order to attract them, he directed the prayer of the Muslims to Jerusalem for like a year and a half. Hmm. This might be correct. Uh, yet they didn't uh, buy this thing. And they have the origin. Why, they, why do they have to take the replica? So they didn't convert to Islam. He got uh, very angry at them. At the beginning, he burned their trees. They were making business out of uh, nabiv. Means they were producing a liquor made of dates. Dates have glucose, and you can make a good liquor out of them. Uh, and Arabs those days were drinking uh, alcoholic beverages with no problem. Give us a until today, you know, you and uh, and uh, well, you can say that they also bury the the daughters alive, as happened recently in this country, the Shafia family. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you, to a degree, so um, uh, he burned the trees. It he, he didn't help. He burned the houses. It also didn't work. So he killed the men. One day, the Israeli tradition said that one man, he killed 600 Jews and uh, he took the daughters. One of his wives was a daughter of one of the leaders of these tribes and uh, this was the end of the Jews, of Haibar, of this oasis. And uh, there, was, there was no reason why to direct the, the prayer to Jerusalem because there were no Jews to attract to Islam. End of Jerusalem in Israel because since there were no Jews, he directed the prayer to Mecca, sanctified the city, later he, he occupied it, burned all the idols, and Islamized the Mecca. And this is how Mecca is holy to Islam until this very day. Yet he directed to Jerusalem his back and, many, and maybe some other parts as well. Uh, so this is the end of Jerusalem in the days of Muhammad. In those days, when he was uh, functioning in the Arab Peninsula, he, he had a group of uh, Muslims, of supporters, in the city of Taif. Well-known city until this, until this very day, very nice city. And this city is two days walking from Mecca. And he used to go there to visit his community and to... Uh, take support for them. And then the way is two days walking. Between every two days, 
there is usually a night. And until today. And, and uh, at night, you don't want to stay in the desert out because you will be devoured either by four legged animals or by two legged animals. Ones will enslave you, sell you, and annex your, uh, your horse or your camel to their fleet. So you don't want to stay up there. He had, according to the Islamic tradition, which is written by some geographers, there was a village between Mecca and Taif named al jiran where he used to spend the night with another group of Muslims who lived in this village. And in the morning he would pray and go to his way, either to Taif or back to Mecca. He would pray in one of two mosques, according to this tradition. One was closer to the village. Its name was Al-Masjid Al-Adna, the closer mosque. Or he would cross the valley and pray in another mosque which was further from the, from the village. It was called Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the further. Okay, either he would pray either in this or that and go to his way either to Taif or back to Mecca. And this is the tradition about the Al-Aqsa, near Al-Jihrana, between Mecca and Taif, deep in the Arab Peninsula. One morning, he wakes up with a new revelation, uh, which is stated in the Quran, chapter 17, verse 1. Blessed be he who took his servant at night, in spite of all the dangers and the eminent animals, at night, from the Holy Mosque, which is Mecca, to the further mosque, which is near al which we, the deity, we, blessed its surroundings, since in order to, in order to show him our wonders, means Allah sees everything and hears everything. This is the verse. Blessed be he who took his servant at night from the Holy Mosque, to the further mosque, which we blessed its surroundings in order to show him our wonders, since he sees everything and hears. This is the verse in the Quran. Of course, his companions understood it very well. Some wonder happened to him. He, of course, that he went to sleep here. Something happened during the night. He was brought to say to al jirana to the further mosque, saw what he saw came back at night and woke up again in his bed in the morning. Okay, wonderful uh, vision which he might have had. One night back and forth, he had uh, like very fast uh, flight and, uh, okay. and they continued their, their day and this, this verse actually um, is not so different from many visions which the Prophet Muhammad had. Uh, they didn't fall off the chairs and continued their life. He passed away in the year of 632, uh, 10 years after the region. And uh, since this uh, the period of the, uh, of, the cap of the caliphs, Khalifa means substitute, <laughs> uh, started uh, Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, and then came Ali, the fourth one in his days the Shi-Sunni uh, problem started, and after the fifth one, the fifth caliph prevailed, he moved the caliphate, the, the, the capital of the caliphate, from Mecca to Damascus. Because it was easier, his hammer was there, his commanders, <coughs> it was closer to Iraq, <coughs> when the where the uh, fight continued to, uh, deep into Asia uh, and, and to the west towards Morocco. And at the year of 711, they will cause the Mediterranean to occupy Spain. Um, 
When he uh, took the caliphate at uh, around 661, two, three, depends what, uh, what uh, we take as, as, as a capital. But since 665, the capital was totally in Damascus, and everything which they looted from the Byzant Byzantine Empire, the Persian Empire, and all the kingdoms which were defeated on the, on, on the way, uh, was brought to Damascus, and it was distributed to the, to the combatants. They, bought, they built uh, magnificent houses, and uh, became billionaires, in terms of today, within a very short time. Uh, the army was half in the east, I would say the 670 already, and like uh, past Iraq, fighting in Persia, what Persia today is, to the east, and past what today Tunisia is, and fighting uh, <coughs> around Algeria, what, uh, what Algeria is today, to the west, towards Morocco. <coughs> Those uh, times in Damascus, the situation of us was very bad because most of the men were in the army fighting. In Damascus, on every man who remained in the capital to run the state, they had like uh, 10 women who didn't know where their husbands are, if they are still alive, because they were fighting. No, those days they didn't have neither cell phones nor uh, another phones. No fax, no email, no nothing. And the husbands did, didn't take airplane back home because we are talking about the 7th century. So actually, if somebody went to the, to the war, you know, to the jihad, uh, it was very rare that they knew something about him. After years, he might have returned when his wife is alive. Or not alive. So the detachment between men and women was uh, usually fine. Uh, meanwhile, in Damascus became a very rich, very rich uh, society, uh, and two things were with problem. The school system, the education system, was very problematic, and it it didn't succeed to to um, educate in two issues. One, to stop drinking, and as you know, if somebody drinks, it's very hard to to stop. And of course, the Islam doesn't allow, but uh, they kept on uh, drinking. Secondly, things uh, between, the, between men and women were rather liberal. Because before Islam came to the world, uh, those Arab tribes were very liberal in relations between men and women. So these things, this both things which Islam actually restricted and banned, were still uh, uh, very liberal in those days. And it was, uh, it's a wonder, how, how could they allow themselves behaving in such a liberal way when it comes to drinking and relations between men and women uh, who are not married. There is a hadith which says that if uh, a man who committed sins, if he goes to Mecca, to the Hajj, once a year, with good faith, and he encircles the Kaaba the seven times, with good faith, all his sins are cleansed and he comes out from the Hajj as clean from sin as a baby who was just born from his mother's womb. Which is very good. They can have parties all year in Damascus, all kinds of parties, and go to Mecca once a year, settle their accounts with Allah, and go back to Damascus to continue what they stopped a week ago. So this is how they did year after year. And uh, it actually was efficient because they could do it. In the year of 682, a guy in, Damas in, uh, in Mecca, his name was Abdallah ibn Zubayr, decided that it cannot carry on like this. Those Muslims, or so-called Muslims, in the area of Damascus cannot behaves in such a way through the year and come to Mecca in order to clean their sins and go back to Damascus to continue and then come again to clean the sins and go back. It, it doesn't work. It does, it's, not, it's not what the Hajj is meant. So he blocked the, the ways to Mecca 
in front of those who came from Damascus, from the, the, what today's Syria is. He didn't let them come to, to pilgrimage, and those who dared to, to come uh, were sent back either uh, with broken legs and uh, hands or in coffins. So they went to the caliph, who in their days, Yazid ben Muawiyah, was uh, seldom found sober himself. And they complained that uh, this Abdullah bin Zubayr doesn't let them come to Hajj. And Hajj is an, uh, an obligation, a mitzvah, which they perform, should perform every year. But he couldn't do anything because half of his army is fighting in the east. Half of the army fights in the west. And the little number of policemen who are in Damascus are either drunk or very tired. So uh, he couldn't actually resist this rebellion in Mecca, <coughs> which prevented the Hajj for at least eight years. So he collected his, uh, his wise people his, uh, of the court and consulted them what can be done. So they said, look, uh, Jerusalem was holy for Jews, was holy for Christians. Let it be uh, only for us. And since Jerusalem is under our hands, we don't have to go all the way down to Mecca. Let's divert the Hajj to Jerusalem. So he tells them, hey, uh, Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Quran. So I said, it's okay. We can take vacation from forging hadith about the Shiites, and we can arrange some hadith about Jerusalem to enhance the statue of Jerusalem, and we'll convince the people. So he says, okay, go ahead. First of all, they took this verse from the Quran. Blessed be he who took his servant at night from the Holy Mosque to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And they said, the Al-Aqsa is in Jerusalem. Those days, it was already 50 years after he, he passed away, Muhammad. Nobody remembers where, where Al-Aqsa is. And don't forget, this is a different constituency, different, different people, because they are addressing the people who are living in, in the northern part of the of the uh, of, of, of the of Islam, while this Jiran is the southern part. So it's different people. They don't remember. They don't know where originally the Al Aqsa was. So it's easy to sell them this idea that Al Aqsa is in Jerusalem, and they invented this story. Uh, about the night journey, uh, which uh, in short is, is well known that Muhammad was uh, wrote, uh, took this horse, uh, Al Burak, uh, in some verses he has wings, in some verses he doesn't have wings, but he has hoofs which reach the horizon so fast it is, and he rode on it, and he came to Jerusalem, and then the angel Gabriel uh, received, his, received him and entered him. Uh, entered with him to the Temple Mount, they prayed, and the, uh, and the angel, angel, angel took him to the first heaven. This is the story. First heaven, uh, he knocked at the door, and somebody asked, uh, who is there? So said, Gabriel, who is with you? Muhammad was invited, yes. And then uh, and the door opened, and there was Adam. Adam the first. And he blessed Muhammad and wished him good luck and he took them to the second heaven. Again, the whole procedure and the door opened and there were the two uh, cousins, Yahya and Isa, the, the, the sons of the aunt. Who are these? Yahya and Isa is Yohanan, Johannes and Jesus. The sons of the uh, city. Uh, other story is, if a Muslim prays in a mosque, he has his reward. If he prays in Mecca, he has seven times the reward. If he goes to Jerusalem, he has 77 times the reward. And if rain falls upon him, or a heavy, hot sun burns him, he has 777 times the reward. Okay, so this is how Jerusalem is way much better than Mecca.
and so forth. Many, many stories like this, all are, by the way, uh, accumulated into a book which was uh, uh, edited by a friend of mine, Professor Yitzhak Hasson, from the Hebrew U in Jerusalem. So this is how they try to convince the people by all these stories that it is, it is better to go to Jerusalem and not to Mecca. After all, you could go to Mecca and um, to bring it. This is how Jerusalem became holy, because of this uh, rebellion in Mecca. After eight years, the guy gave up and uh, the pilgrimage went back to Mecca and uh, all these stories were put in the storage. Uh, until the, the 12th century, when the crusaders, or after the Christian crusaders, uh, occupied Jerusalem, and Saladin, Salah uh, wanted to fight them. He incited, he inflamed his uh, soldiers by reciting of these stories about Jerusalem, about the holiness of Jerusalem. So it, those, those stories became again familiar to the people because of the fight against the Crusaders. To a degree that some dozens of years after the Crusaders were defeated, an uh, Islamic scholar named Ibn Taymiyyah, who knew about all these forgeries about Islam, uh, banned coming to Jerusalem to pilgrimage. He banned performing the Hajj uh, ceremonies in Jerusalem, because you know that the whole thing is based on uh, forgery which was made in the 7th century. He banned sleeping in Jerusalem in order to get cured for all kinds of <coughs> illnesses because it doesn't work, because it's, it's a lie, she lied. And everything, he actually reduced the holiness of Jerusalem to the degree of every other city in Islam. Because he knew what, what was the motivation to uh, elevate the status of Jerusalem. And it, it actually worked and he succeeded in, in his endeavor until the 20th century. To a degree that the Temple Mount where the Al-Aqsa is, Al-Aqsa allegedly is, um, became a city dump of Jerusalem for building material. Whoever had to throw out like a roof which fell or things like this, this was the, first, the, the place where building materials were done. Secondly, team of the uh, of Israel. They nominated the Mufti, Hajim el Hussaini. Little they knew, little, little they knew about him. Uh, he wanted to uh, have tourism in Jerusalem. So he came out with a booklet, uh, with a booklet about, uh, it repeats a lot of this uh, booklet, and if you want to. So, in those days, at the beginning of the 20s, they had no problem to say, that uh, Jerusalem is the place of the temples, of the Jewish temples. Of course, the Temple Mount is there. However, when we come further during the 20th century, today the discourse is totally different. And what they say today is totally uh, 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 different. What, what happened between 1925 in 2008, this is what happened. In 1925, they didn't see yet the Zionist, uh, the Zionist uh, campaign, the Zionist danger. But meanwhile, 1948, the Jews established the state. 1967, they occupied the Temple Mount. What would be the next step? They will build the temple. And thus, Judaism will come back to life after Islam came to the world to replace it. Means, Oops. means that the whole raison d'etre of Islam as a religion which came to the world to replace Judaism and Christianity will be challenged by the fact that Jews came back to their home, to their temple, and they will rebuild Jerusalem, rebuild the temple, and come back to life. So what will be with Islam? Because the whole thing about Islam is to replace Judaism, and this is how Islam builds its legitimacy, builds its validity on 
the legitimizing Judaism and 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 and, and claiming that uh, Judaism uh, doesn't exist anymore. By the way, there is a verse in the Quran which states this idea, which says in the Dina in the Law Islam means the religion with Allah is only Islam. Means Allah doesn't recognize any other religion but Islam. If can, no, the, the whole reason that of Islam is to replace Judaism. So, and, and, and to build itself on the ruins of Judaism, using the, the breaks, using the prophets, using the places. By the way, this is why uh, Muslims through history allow themselves to build uh, mosques on churches and synagogues. It happened in Ramadan. It happened in Damascus. The, the central mosque of Damascus is built on a church. And they don't hide it. Baghdad. In Baghdad, in Istanbul, there is a... Hey, Sophia. And the Hagia Sophia uh, uh, is built on a, on, a, on a church. In Spain, Spain, so many churches were turned into mosques, either fully or partially, because what the Christians need churches for. After all, Christianity doesn't mean much after Islam came to the world. And here, Jews come back to Jerusalem. They might, Allah forbid, uh, build their temple again. So what will with Islam? Okay? This is why they view this issue about Jerusalem, the, the mere Israeli control of Jerusalem, as a threat on Islam, no? a theological uh, uh, threat on Islam. Which is an, another she because of some kind of politics, because they cannot, cannot show that they would tolerate uh, Israel, because uh, they will be viewed as Zionist if they tolerate. It's so all, all about politics. Traditionally, traditionally, Shiites have no, nothing with Jews. So, uh, this is the. So, what happened in 67 when Diane supposedly <coughs> had control? Ah, he gave them the. He gave them. Now it's well known. He gave them the the permission to control the temple mount, the Muslims. Why? Because he, as you know, he was an archaeologist. He was digging illegally in many places. He, he was, was an illegal archaeologist. He wanted, by giving them the permission to control the mountain, <coughs> he wanted them to give him permission to dig illegally in the mountain. This, well, this is how he uh, arranged it. Uh, it didn't work, but uh, uh, he, uh, okay, yeah. as you are told, he once was almost buried yeah. by, dig by digging in the Negev somewhere, and uh, some, uh, some, uh, something collapsed on him, and he uh, actually was, was injured while digging illegally. So this is why he gave them the permission to control the mountain, or to control the Alaksa, uh, so he can dig them. Uh, this was the whole thing about Daya. Now, whenever Israel, whenever Israel uh, proves that it came to Jerusalem only in order to remain in Jerusalem, they are being very angry about this. Especially when Israel builds apartments and houses in Jerusalem. It happened in uh, June 1st, 2008, when the Olmert government of those days announced that it is about to build some hundreds of apartments in Har Choma and in Pisgat Zev. Uh, the Arabs, were, the Muslims went outraged because of this. And, uh, of course, the Al Jazeera, the jihadi channel of those days, of until today, uh, dedicated like 15 minutes to this issue in the main news bulletin. 15 minutes for an item in news bulletin, this is a hell of a lot of time. It's by states out of, out, out of uh, Israel. This is a struggle between religions. We cannot ignore the basis, the religious basis of the struggle over the land of Israel, over the, of Jerusalem, and over the whole thing. The basis of this struggle is religious. Whoever ignores it actually ignores the fact of how they view. I know that today people are afraid of this because it's not nice to talk about religion, it's not politically correct, but this is definitely the basis of the whole struggle between Israel and its neighbors. It starts with the religion, goes to politics, to national issues, to territorial issues, but the basis is religion. Uh, we in Barilab, 
uh, now establish a new center for the study of the Middle East in Islam, which will show the world the real things about what happens not only in the Middle East, but in other places as well. How Muslims think, how they view things, what are the motivations, and because these things today are rather sensitive, and people try to circumvent this because of political correctness on one side, and Saudi money, which buys all kinds of research centers in the world, or it happened lately in Yale, happened in London School of Economics, and other places where Gulf money actually diverts what think tanks and academic institutions say and publish. We will not, we in Barilan, the center will not be bought by the Saudis, we will say the truth, which the world is in a must to know what goes on in the Islamic world. Uh, whoever wants this uh, center, uh, carrying the name of his uh, late uh, grandfather, is cordially invited to hold